Hello everyone, in this uh, lecture we're going to be learning how to compare the KC and the QC to determine the prediction, to determine the direction of the equilibrium. So I remember the KC and even I can write down just in a KEQ, just in a simple equilibrium constant expression. And the QC is going to be your reaction quotient. Now what's really the difference between those two? Well, it turns out their, their, const their expressions would be the same. So if I go ahead and write down a reaction where I have 2A uh, in a gas form and it's in equilibrium or it's um, going on to make a, a B in the gas form, then I'm, when I'm writing the equilibrium constant expression, so Kc, it's going to be the concentration of B divided by the concentration of A to the power 2. Now, what would be the QC expression for this particular reaction? Well, the QC expression is still going to be the same. It's going to be the concentration of B divided by the concentration of A to the power 2. Then if their expressions are the same, what's really the difference between those two? Well, it turns out the KC is given when you are already at an equilibrium. The QC you don't know whether you are in equilibrium or not. So let's suppose you're given your the concentration of A and your concentration of B. And at that given time, you don't know if you are at equilibrium or not. So you go ahead and figure out what the QC is going to be and then compare the QC with the given KC value. Now, in that case, if your QC comes out to be equal to the KC, then that means you are at equilibrium. In that case, your reaction is not going to shift to the left or not going to shift to the right. But suppose your QC and the KC are not equal to one another, so that means your particular reaction is not at equilibrium, and in that particular case, it's either going to be shifted to the right side until it gets to the equilibrium or it's going to be shifted to the left side until it gets to the equilibrium. And how do you really compare that? So suppose your QC is greater than the KC. Now if your QC is greater than the KC, to make this QC equal to the KC, what would you have to do? Well, you must lose some of the B or you must lose some of your products and you must increase the concentration of some of your reactants in order to make that QC equal to the KC. So in that case, I can say your reaction is going to shift to the left side or you're going to be making more reactants from the products and in the process you will lose some of your products and in this particular case if I focus on you know these guys right there I would lose some of my B and I will make some of that A until your QC becomes equal to the KC. Now the opposite can be said as well where your QC is actually less than the KC so that means you don't have enough products yet to get to the equal to the KC. So since you don't have enough products, your reaction must shift to the right side so that you can make more products and you can lose some of those reactants until your QC becomes equal to the KC. So this is how you want to keep the, keep in mind like under what conditions your reaction will shift to the left, under what conditions your reaction shift to the right side. Now, at any given chance, if you're not given, like suppose if you had only A given in this particular case, uh, the reactant A given, then you'd know this reaction will shift to the right side because I don't really have any product or any I don't really have any B. And I can say that otherwise as well, if you're given only B in the beginning, then you know your reaction will shift to the left side. Now the QC, the KC concept is going to be used when you have every single product and every single reactant given already and you don't know whether you are already at the equilibrium or not and that's when you're going to be comparing your QC and the KC values. Well, let's take an example here to make things clear. I have this reaction where the NO2 is reacting with um, itself to make N2O4. And I'm given the KP expression, but then I'm, when I'm looking at the question, I'm told I got these moles of NO2 and I got the moles of N2O4 in a 2 liters of container. 
well, I'm really dealing with the equilibrium constant here in terms of the concentration, not in terms of the pressure. So maybe the first thing I want to do is go ahead and convert this Kp into the Kc. So your Kp, remember, is going to be equal to the Kc, and then it's going to be the RT to the power delta n. So let's see what that's going to be now. Your Kp is 6.8. And I can go ahead and figure out what Kc is going to be. Your R is going to be 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters moles minus 1 Kelvin minus 1. Your temperature is 299 Kelvin. And what's going to be the delta N value? Well, remember, the delta N in this particular case is going to be, I got only one gas moles on the product side and two gas moles on the reactive side, so it's 1 minus 2. So that's going to be minus 1. So it's going to be just minus 1 here. So we'll just do your math here and figure out what the Kc is going to be. So it's 6.8 equals Kc. Let me do this math real quick here. So I got 0 0.0821 times 299, and then that's going to be to the power of minus 1. So it's going to be 0 0.0 407. So then your Kc in this particular case is going to be equal to 6.8 divided by 0 0.0407. So let me just do this math here. So it's going to be 167 as your Kc value. Now I can go back and figure out what the Qc is going to be and then compare this Qc with the Kc that I got here. So what are the concentrations going to be? So I know I have the NO2 concentration here is going to be equal to, I got 0 0.055 moles. And then remember, uh, we have two liters of this container. So even though you're given the moles here, don't take those as your concentrations. You have to find the concentration there. So that's going to come out to be 0 0.0275 molar and then when I'm looking at my concentration of N2O4 it's gonna be well I'm given 0 0.08 moles so it's gonna be 0 0.08 moles divided by 2 liters and that's gonna be let's see 0 0.08 divided by 2 it's gonna be 0 0.04 should have done that in my mind Okay, then what's going to be the QC expression here? So remember, the QC expression still stays the same. You would have the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of reactants. So on the product side, I have N2O4. And then on the reactant side, I got NO2. So, but remember, there are two moles of NO2. So I would put that in the power there. So the N2O4 is going to be 0 0.04. And then your... NO2 concentration here is going to be 0 0.0275, and then that's going to be squared. So let's see what that comes out to be. So that's 52.9 as your QC value here. So now I know my QC, I know my KC. I can go back and compare both of those. Your KC came out to be 167. And since your KC is still bigger here, your QC is uh, uh, less than what KC should have been. So another way of saying uh, the reaction does not have enough product as it's supposed to have once it gets to an equilibrium. So to make more products, what do you have to do? You must have some of these reactants or some of these NO2 reacting with one another to make N2O4. So at the end of the day, since your Kc is less than the Qc, you need to make more products. So you need to make more product. And since you need to make more product, it's going to shift to the right side. So that's how you're going to be determining what's going to be the direction of your equilibrium, const equilibrium reaction. Uh, by comparing the KC and the QC. If you have any questions on any of those concepts, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.